Whenever I cook something or do anything else using my trusty kitchen apron, I get some lovely comments asking how I made it. But that apron is over a decade old, from way before I even considered doing this wild YouTube thing. So today, I thought we could make another somewhat similar apron. Because a good apron is worth its salt when it comes to extending the lifespan of the rest of our clothes. And getting used to wearing one has made a big difference for my clumsy self. I want to use this old tablecloth in a nice thick cotton damask that a friend gave me when she downsized her fabric stash. It has a couple of stains in it that I have not been able to get rid of, but honestly, that is part of why I chose it. A kitchen apron, to me, does not have to be this beautiful, lacy, hard-to-care-for thing, reminiscent of upstairs servants in Downton Abbey in their evening uniforms. No. A kitchen apron is a utilitarian thing. Hard-wearing, easy to wash. More in line with Mrs. Patmore and Daisy's aprons. So, in a way, repurposing a beautiful tablecloth into an apron because it is stained kind of fits, no? Our tablecloth is only 150 by 130 centimeters, so we will need a plan that doesn't ask for too many frills and ruffles. A bib and pockets are more important to me. There are two large fleur-de-lis patterns on it on either side, but they aren't centered, so I will cut all the straps from one side to amend this. This tablecloth is technically wide enough that we could cut the apron and bib in one piece, but if we cut them separately, we can flip the fleur-de-lis for the bib on the other side so that they are all facing in the same direction. Which, no, is not strictly necessary, but how delightful is it to be able to play with these details when we have them. And of course, with what is left, we can cut some almighty pockets. This time, I am taking inspiration from one of the aprons Daisy wears later in the show. We might as well start by preparing our aforementioned pockets, hemming all the way around except the top. Once hemmed, we can pin them to the sides of our apron. A little further out than I want them in the end, as we will add some pleats later. And yes, I did the hemming before the attaching. That way, we don't have to try to get into the pockets or turn them inside out in order to fell the seams down. We will also add a little bit of extra reinforcement here, since the opening of the pockets receive quite a bit of wear. And by the time we have pinned the hem of both our bottom apron and bib, I remember that I have a sewing machine, which would drastically speed up this process.
honestly, if you want to start repurposing secondhand textiles, tablecloths and bedsheets are a great place to start. They are big and easy to plan with, where one of the biggest limitations is usually just that you have a limited amount of fabric. Great for building experience and confidence before we take on more complex disassembly and planning. We are almost at the point of assembly now, but first let us stitch up the shoulder straps. which are, not in any way promptly, but rather willfully and stubbornly turned inside out. The last thing I want to make are two thinner loops for the back, but these I am stitching from the outside. And finally, assembly. I'll start with the shoulder straps, which are long, because they will also be our back ties. For a touch of extra stability, I am also stitching up our apron and bib, separate from the waistband. Also, pleats. I do like me some pleats. And for some reason, especially when I feel a bit tired, I prefer to secure the pleats separately. To make our last attachment that little bit easier, I am pressing the two straps for our waistband before pinning them to our apron. Having the bib means we can't just stitch and fold our waistband, but sandwiching our apron in between the two lengths solves that problem neatly. At the end of the waistband I am putting our two narrow loops for the shoulder straps. My other apron has buttons here, but my thinking is that this will make it more adjustable for different people. And lastly, we are just tucking the ends of our straps in and stitching them up. And there she is. Whether you prefer buttons or loops for the shoulder straps, there is one detail I enjoy above most others. Having straps that cross over in the back. 
I just find it so much more comfortable and well-fitting than any other alternative. To be honest with you, I would have liked to add a cute ruffle to the bottom, but between cute details and pockets, you know I'll go for the pockets. Still, the coverage on this one is excellent. And with fabric as thick as this, any liquid spills should be no big deal at all. But for now, thank you so very much for watching. I do have a Patreon if you wish to support my work, or just to make sure that our adorable Void Overlords get all the snacks. Bye!